Guess who's back? <laughs> We got my main man Micho over here, and we got Juan. We had a little bit of rain last night, so this is actually our first day on the project. Ed and uh, company uh, turned it over to the big guns for the foreseeable future until we can get the rest of our construction team out here. So it's up to the three of us today to make as much progress as possible. Our main focus today is going to be installing some circulation tools, i.e. our pond power heads. You can see we have our stacked slate walls, which are really, really awesome. Ed and the guys had a really, really great idea of just rocking this really deep section in with the stacked slate wall. So it just goes straight down. Where we're taking it from here is we are actually going to be installing these pond power heads into or inside of some of these stacked slate walls. So you can see that we've got some holes already cut out of these. And what's gonna happen is, is these walls right here are gonna end up rounding out this section and we're gonna have two power heads pushing back along the, the bottom of this deep section, back against these walls, pushing that crap back up into suspension and then being collected by our negative edge that is going to be overflowing kind of where Juan's at right there. So again, it's a circulation tool that we're, that we're installing here. Because the power heads are going to be inside of these stack slate walls, we're gonna actually run some some suction lines using some corrugated drain tile back behind here with some intakes on the ends of those suction lines that are going to be located over here directly underneath our negative edge so everything's being pulled from this side over here we don't want to put the suction lines you know let's just say over here but yet we're pulling water from over here and then you get this weird cross current so we're trying to keep all the suction or all the water being pulled from a certain direction in one general area and not multiple places on the pond creating uh, weird circulation issues we're just going to continue pumping up some of the standing water here so it's nice to work in and that's kind of where we're at basically the way we want our stack slate walls to go they're gonna curve back in there we'll probably get a little rock or something down in there just to help hold everything up and to transition really nicely but you'll notice that these don't fit perfectly together and that's okay you'll never ever see that joint what's most important is that joint along the front so we still have to kind of make sure that everything matches up and to help us do that what I'm going to do is I am going to drill two holes between the two of them and then I'm gonna take the stainless hardware here and actually bolt the two of them together I'm gonna bolt these two together and then I'm gonna bolt this one and that one together so that everything's is a little bit more structural you can see I've got this filled with gravel to help keep it from moving getting jostled around people are gonna be walking on top of this so the idea was this whole bottom is basically going to be a flagstone patio so it's all gonna be big pieces of slate down here um, our elevations work out as such to where we can just bring the slate right over the top of these and we will cut the front of them down Almost make it look like a coping so the slate's gonna overhang these walls and then we will do the same to mimic that along this tall wall back in through here that is what the finished product will look like you can see we've got one of our drainage tees in here the power head will actually sit inside of this guy and we have one tee installed with the three inch corrugated line that's going to go back behind that wall and then go that way, that way, that way, that way, and then daylight somewhere over there to have the suction intake for that line somewhere back in front of the negative edge, like I said. Get these things filled with gravel, get this trench back behind it filled with gravel. And the reason we have this trench is we always over excavate so that we give ourselves plenty of creative freedom and maneuverability with these things and aren't really tied to the excavation to determine where we're gonna put things. Always over excavate. You can always move those rocks in or out or the walls in or out as you please and then you can backfill with gravel accordingly. So guys, super, super important to give yourself a little bit extra slack of the low voltage line that's around the power head. Just in case, in the event that you ever have to service this or potentially unclog it, you can kind of see how, how Mito's already gotten to that step where he wrapped the cable or the cord around it. And then we're feeding it through that drainage box T and, and then you saw him actually stuff the power head inside of that T. This cable is just gonna simply come out the top and then we'll daylight it wherever we're gonna get power from. But just remember to give yourself a little bit extra in case you ever have to maintain that thing, okay folks? Well, you can see the sun is, is now shining out here. The guys and I have kind of finished up the plumbing for the pond power heads. Here's one of the suction lines that comes out of the back of the wall. It's just will all be covered up with gravel. Here's one going that way and then there's another one down in here. There's that drain tile T. You can see the power head 
has now been installed. These two lines run this way, back through this trench, and then we're gonna, again, fill all this with gravel. Here's those suction intakes. So we have two on each line feeding each one of the power heads. So that's what they look like. Look how nicely those walls all kind of fit in with each other. We will end up putting like a perforated drain cap over all these. We'll flush cut them. Once we finish elevation up here, we'll cut them, and then we'll put a drain cap so that everything can empty down in here. So this will not end up staying like this, but we're gonna fill this trench or this cavity all with gravel. The reason the aquablox in here is uh, to take up some of that void space. Don't really need the extra gravel. We don't want that gravel pushing back up against here. So you've got this, and then we've got the aqua block. So this T is going to end up butting up to the inside of this aqua block. So actually we'll be able to get a little bit of infiltration down through here and then down into this T. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. Super excited to see this work. But these power heads blasting water along the bottom deep section here against these walls, pushing stuff back up into suspension, being drawn out over the negative edge. Here comes Juan with the gravel. Super excited about progress. Good morning, folks. We are out here again today at a Christ Community Church. See, we've got Heather Bell behind us, so she's our special guest today. She's in our tech department, folks, so she's the woman you talk to when you call in, have questions regarding product, installation techniques, estimating, right? A lot of different stuff. So if you guys got questions out there, she's the wonderful voice you hear on the other end when you call in and, and have those problems or concerns or questions. She's out here today. This is all part of research and development. You know, rec ponds are something that we're doing more and more of, so she's out here to get a better idea and to be better educated as far as our construction practices. So super, super great to have you out here learning alongside us so that you can in turn teach the certified aquascape contractors and the rest of you guys out there that are looking forward to building your own ponds. Right now we are focusing on getting some base material down for our steps that's going to lead people down into the very bottom of this water feature. Right now what we've got cooking is this super sack right here brought to you by Illinois Brick Company, huh? So this is CA7 or it's a three quarter angular rock that's used for base material there is no fines in here guys okay so the reason that we did that is because this is going to be in the pond we don't want all that little stuff and the dust to be a part of the water column the three-quarter base will stay intact very very nicely so this will be the base material for the entire bottom for the flagstone patio as well as our steps nice. first step see how it goes these things are six feet long this step is actually the most important step for us because if we screw up this elevation, then we screw up every elevation after that. Our goal is to have the very, very top step that's going into the pond at four inches above water level. Yesterday we shot levels with the transit and made sure and did a bunch of math because these steps are about five and seven eighths inch thick. So we're compensating for that. We'll have about eight steps in here if my math is right. Fingers crossed. to kind of show you where the steps had evolved to yesterday. We really wanted to start incorporating some of these big chunky boulders in and around the steps. You can see we've got one cut in really, really nicely into the steps. So it makes the steps actually look as though they were carved around that rock, which they were. This staircase is going to flank both sides of this, but we're gonna put another couple boulders here and we'll have the staircase kind of come in through here and around here. The very, very top will be a big, long L shape, but this is just to kind of break it up as well as give a nice area Area for them to attach a railing to that will probably come all the way down the center of these steps. So again, guys, this is a church. So not only are they going to be using it for recreation, but I also believe they're going to be using it for baptisms and things like that. So we want to make sure that people can safely get in and out of the pond. Again, the nice flat step, big wide treads in through here. We do have some irregularities with the distance of the treads or the width of the treads. So you can see this one's pretty wide. And then we've got some more 12 inch treads in through here. I think that's okay. 
having kind of these landing areas just for people to kind of congregate on these steps. We also wanted to get some of these boulders down here nice and flat so that people could sit on them and kind of gather, right? At any point, there could be 20 to 30 people in this pond. So we just want to make sure that there are places for them to sit and congregate in the pond itself. The guys right now are bringing in additional steps. Again, these are those Unilock ledge stone steps. These are 24 inches wide by 72 inches long, six inches high. We've got the nice rock face on the top, bottom, and the two sides. And then you can see that the back is nice and smooth, okay? All right, well, I think you can see uh, this behind me there. We'll see, we just got a couple big fat raindrop on our heads. So we're gonna try and push through as much as we can and just kind of see what happens. So we're making progress. We're doing what we can before the weather gets here, but another beautiful Chicago spring day. I feel like you guys have seen me in this angle all day today. I haven't moved outside of the 50 square feet behind me. The steps are virtually done. We started cutting in some of the rocks around the perimeter. You can see the one right in front of Juan. We got that one in and we're just starting to work our way up. It turned out pretty stinking good, if you ask me. So this is gonna be the area where everybody's gonna enter and exit the pond. Look at how wide some of these treads are. Nothing we do is cookie cutter. It's all unique. It looks really like a work of art. Like everything was kind of built around these rocks. It looks fantastic. We're gonna get another big chunk right there just to kind of frame everything out And then we'll start working our way around this cove and then again that waterfall is gonna come down through there Big waterfalls up top dumping down into a pooling area There will be a bridge going across here leading to a walkway that goes basically where the machine is and then bringing you back down these steps Here's kind of the progress where we're at right now This looks awesome Big, big rocks, big granite is looking really killer. I cannot wait to continue this uh, after the weekend, but until then, peace out, Girl Scouts. Had a nice long weekend. We are back at it hard again today. Just starting to set some of the bigger rocks. We've got our steps basically done. We're just waiting on a little bit more base material. There will be one more course up there. So we're gonna focus on this area and through here, get that done. And then hopefully at that time, Nicholas will be showing up with uh, our base material. We'll get these steps in and then we'll just start transitioning around. So that is where we're at today. We've got our little GoPro set up so we can get you some uh, time-lapse footage. Last step is in, so water level is about two inches above that second step. You can see how a lot of the rocks along the edges have kind of the, this flat top so that people can actually sit right there and kind of dangle their feet in the water. It's looking great. Nick is backfilling a bunch of dirt back in this area and through here. This will be kind of a peninsula in the pond. Give it a really nice shape. You can see how far out this liner is right here. That's that big rock right here. And then we piece together some of this stuff. So this is all done. When we fold the liner back, you'll see that. And then we're gonna continue back this way and creating this little cove effect. Just a bunch of big rocks right now. We've got some work to do over here still, but it's turning out really, really nice. <laughs> Cue the gloomy music. Well, I don't know how to tell you this. Um, it's freaking raining. This is so dumb. Whatever, tomorrow will be uh, another day. We were just starting to get in our groove and uh, Mother Nature threw us another curveball. She's really uh, kind of been the ace of the pitching staff this spring, you know? Win after win after win for Mother Nature. I guess we're strike out for the rest of the day, but we'll be back tomorrow, hit it hard. So 